Hello, my name is Ray. I'm with Team Steam. And right now I'm at Flash Industrial Painting where we're working on two or three things at once. First thing we're doing is this well cement pump unit. Second thing I'm doing is this uh, newer model uh, passenger rear door for a Ford pickup. One of my customers painting it white and it had some uh, dents in it to fix first. Already putting the Ford to work. I just went down to a neighboring town and got another load of pellets. Normally I get them from here in town, but they were out, so I had to go to a different town to get them. The side of this panel, both sides of that panel, fenders, hubs, those those pipes, the front fenders there, all of it's going to be green today. And the front of this fender was all chewed up, so yesterday I went ahead and repaired it before we quit for the night. Let's go ahead and unmask it. And the reason I put that tape over that, over almost all my repairs, is because it holds it all flat. It, it almost completely prevents air bubbles and uh, gives you a really good surface to work with to begin with, flattens everything out. Then you can maneuver it, move things around where you want them, because like this is much thicker than this. Move things around where you want them, under the tape, it, it just makes it very convenient. And as you can see, it comes up pretty well. And now I'm gonna take this air-powered Sawzall, which is the best tool for cutting and shaping fiberglass. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on it to show where I need to be and then cut right next to that line. Now we'll pull this off. We have a good start. Now I can finish shaping it. See, it's just a little bit, little bit sticking out this way. I wanted it that way on purpose so I can finish it out with a DA sander. Do all my sanding, finish out the bottom with the DA, get it good and perfect. Get some body work on it and these fenders are gonna be green today. Now I got some filler on it and some other, the, just little rock tips. Got them filled and I'll be sanding that here in just a few minutes. All right, now everything is sanded. Everything's prepped, everything's finished. I just need to blow all this stuff off. I got this door over here off of a newer model Ford. It's gonna be white, but I'm gonna do it at the same time that I'm doing this, uh, this green on the fenders and on the fenders and on some of these components. They'll all be done at, at, uh, at the same time. That way, if, if I'm gonna pay to heat the shop all night, I'm got as many things curing in here as I can. And uh, first things first, I got a repair I gotta make. Now this repair is up here in the air and it's pretty typical for heavy equipment like this to have this sort of thing happen. So this is a handrail, right? Here's the, here's the back tank and there's that spool. And uh, you can see at the bottom of this railing, it's just split out. That's because moisture gets, gets down in these tubes and from, from one means or another, and it can even just start as condensation sometimes, and then it never goes away. And then it freezes in the winter and swells the tubes and thaws in the summer, and pretty soon they rot from the inside out. That one right there is doing a similar thing. See, the, this is almost round. It's not square at all anymore, it's almost round. And that's from the water getting down in there and freezing in the winter time. So here in a few years, this one's gonna look like that one. Now, the proper way to repair something like that is to cut the entire section out, replace it, and weld in a new one. Uh, but it's not structurally unsound. It's not gonna ever hurt anybody. It's not gonna amount to anything. And I'm certainly not gonna go to that extent. Um, everything that comes in here is cracked and torn and bent and twisted. It's, I have to decide what I'm gonna be willing to do and what I'm not. And if I go to welding on these, I might as well just open a welding shop because that's all there is on them. Uh, but what I am gonna do is just go ahead and fiberglass it. That's what I've done for years, never had one come back. So then I'll grab a cardboard box, one that was gonna get uh, uh, thrown away anyway. A piece of fiberglass matting, razor blade, mix up some resin, simply pour it on the box right on top. You don't necessarily need a tray for this sort of repair. Grab your spreader, spread that out just a little bit. Big enough that it'll cover my, my sheet. Get my sheet, put it in there. You see how it's already soaking through? But I'm gonna go ahead and put a little on top anyway, because that'll guarantee it. Careful where you settle your materials. 
they will stick permanently to everything. Almost nothing bonds like this stuff bonds. Now I'm pressing down so I can get all the air bubbles out. So we've got just one good solid mat. Again, watch where you're setting your stuff because it's going to stay there. And we'll go ahead and install it. like so. And that's what you're left with. It's roughly the same size. It won't stick out too bad or look too bad. And then once it's all set up, I'll just go over it with sandpaper and smooth it up some. And uh, it'll be pretty hard to notice. Now, the way this is going to go down is I'm going to prime everything that I intend to paint in green in black. That way, the green really pops. That, that Kawasaki green pops very well over black. And I'm going to prime this door in white. I'm actually going to prime the door first. And then um, I'm going to paint the green. And then I'm going to come over here with very light pressure and shoot the white on the door. That way the white from the door doesn't have a chance to get back here into the shop on any of the green because as you can tell here, my fan's right on the other side of it. This is what's pulling all of the fumes through the shop is this good size industrial fan. When I'm all done, I'll be able to wipe it all off, clean it all up, and use light pressure and shoot white on it, and therefore get both of these done at the same time. Well, we got all the uh, body work done. Didn't need wet sanding primer for this. If you glaze coat it correctly, you don't. That's ready for primer and paint. ready to go green let's roll